All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from uh, wet and rainy San Diego. I don't get to say that very often. Well, actually get to say it a lot right now. Uh, and today I'm delighted to be welcomed uh, to welcome Mark Phillips, who is actually just up the coast in an equally wet and rainy Los Angeles. How are you doing, Mark? I'm terrific. Thanks for having me, John. It's nice to see you. Absolutely. And uh, Mark is the founder and board chair of Higher Education. He supports his team to build authentic, inclusive partnerships for education companies that work directly with early childhood, K through 12 and higher ed and workforce organizations. He's been recruiting since the late 90s before transitioning into education and happy to, happy to spend his time coaching his team and working on strategic projects to continue expanding the business. And what we're going to talk about today is the relationship sales cliche and why does it still matter? So Mark, over to you. Why do, why do relationships matter? <laughs> well, I, I think they're, they're central to getting anything done, right? So I think um, there are no sales, there, there are no complex sales, let's say it that way. There are no complex sales that get done without a really strong foundation of relationship. I mean, we all go on, on to Amazon and, you know, buy something for 15, 20 bucks. Um, that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the B2B kind of stuff that we all do, the, the stuff that requires you know, kind of significant emotional journeys for the for the buyers in many cases. That's certainly true uh, in the recruiting world. And, you know, I think when it comes to significant software purchases like CRM or like, you know, call recording or, you know, any of the kind of tools that, that we use um, uh, to do our businesses, um, if it's complex, if the if the deal involves uh, you know, a significant portion of a budget or a large buying constituency, or if it's a very highly technical product, I would argue that any sale that gets done has a strong foundation of relationship. Yeah. yeah and, and I would say that, I mean, it's, it was always important, obviously, but it uh, it maybe was kind of pushed to the background a little bit, uh, you know, with the advent of all, you know, inbound and technology and all that kind of stuff. And then COVID came along as well. And I think people are now, again, waking up to uh, sometimes sometimes there are enduring truths that don't yeah. need to change. And, and one of these is that, especially what you're talking about in maybe challenging markets like this, even there is a lot of emotion. Uh, there is a lot of stress involved in a buyer making a purchasing decision probably as part of a buying team. So it's not even uh, one person, it's multiple people. Yeah. But you're never going to get through. You're never going to get through the bumps in the road. You're never going to succeed in a difficult market if you don't have the relationships. Yeah. No, I think that's absolutely true. And you know, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer, and when I when I came up in the late '90s, early 2000s, right, enterprise sales was everything, and everybody talked mm -hmm. about value driven selling and. You know, we all went through the spin selling courses and the Miller Hyman courses, and those are those are really critical. And I would argue that they yep. those models even have relationships at the center because you're really paying attention to individual motivations of buyers and and you know what their what hurdles you need they need your assistance to clear. But you know, back in back in those days. In, in the days of uh, the Halcyon days of uh, enterprise mm -hmm. sales, like I, I think there was the there was a perception that relationship sales was cheap and easy, and it was just a backslapping person yeah. with a with a real Rolodex, an actual Rolodex. Yeah. Um, and you know, along come these methodologies like spin, like like uh, strategic selling and Miller Hyman. Um, and you know others that followed like the challenger and and really um tried to look at things through a different lens and i think i think those lenses are still critical those are still wonderful methodologies but i think i've really come to believe um and just almost just observe in our business mm -hmm. that um that all of those things uh those things can support relationships yeah um, they can cu help cultivate relationships. They can help build trust. But in the end, like that, that idea that um, humans are buying from humans um, and that trustworthiness and, and ideally, especially in the world of 
SaaS and, you know, kind of mm-hmm. long-term engagements really being key to profitability for businesses, those long-term engagements don't happen if you're burning bridges, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I, and I think also that I think sometimes people misunderstand what relationship relationships mean because let's face it, I mean, as you said in the past, there was the backslapping. Oh, let me look at your, oh, is this your kids and all this kind of stuff, exactly. which is all well and good and nice. It's nice. That's kind of icing. But at the end of the day, if you're not actually understanding and helping solve a problem and really making sure that the the person or persons you're dealing with really trust that you understand their business and you can actually offer a solution. Yeah. That's the foundation for the relationship, not the backslapping. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. So um, what are some of the ways now that you think that uh, that people should start to, you know, maybe refocus on relationships and really understanding what they should be doing and how they should be developing relationships? I think for salespeople, especially new business, new logo, hunters, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think it's really important for them to understand where their work sits in context. You know, I understand mm-hmm. the fact that um, while there may be a customer success team, while there may be an account manager, while there may be a strategic partnerships person, whatever, there may, there may be some other accountability uh from a financial perspective for um, for the longer term play, that hunter, um, if they're going to grow in their career uh, mm-hmm. and probably if they're going to um, maximize their hunting earnings, they really need to have the long game yeah. in mind, right? I mean, it, when they're talking with a new business prospect, that prospect, if they're suspicious, if they don't trust the hunter, um, that hunter is not that that hunter is going to, you know, uh, close fewer deals. So, yep. you know, I would argue that that just there's just a slight shift in mentality that just needs to understand the reality of the business world, which is that it's a lot harder to get a new client than it is to get to keep mm-hmm. uh, an existing one. I think we mm-hmm. the last time we looked at this and it's been a couple of years, something like 80 percent of our business comes from people that we've yeah. done business with before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always thought of myself as a hunter. I have, I continue right. to think of myself as a hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's one thing. Just, just you know, understanding that that the business is far, the business context and the health of the business is far bigger than just do I get this deal or do I I not get this yeah. deal. Yeah, you you just you mentioned an interesting thing there because I think that's uh, something we all suffer from at times is that we have a great solution for you and we don't understand why you're not as excited as we are because we forget that actually you have a day job, you have other stuff going on, you have other priorities, who knows what's going on. And and that's where some people, again, fall down because they develop the relationship with one person instead of looking, okay, how do I, how do I develop relationships with multiple people and how do I even how does this person even help me being introduced? Because if you're just stuck with one person, they could leave. They maybe don't have the influence that you think they they did. Um, but certainly, I think you have to really you have to really demonstrate uh, that you have the ability to move and and to spread and expand your relationships rather than just rely on one person. That's so true. And I think um, even when looking at at an individual level, just understanding that. Um, well, like in the, in the example of, of CRM or a job mm-hmm. change, right? I mean, mm-hmm. people, most people are not changing if they're lucky. Uh, if they're good, they're not changing jobs every year. People are not replacing mm-hmm. their CRMs every year, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we've, we've changed our, you know, in, in recru- the recruiting world, applicant tracking systems are kind of a core um, right. uh, technology. Uh, in addition to CRM, we've changed our applicant tracking system five times since 2010, right. um, but not 14 times since 2010. So mm-hmm. there have been people who, salespeople who approached me and, you know, I said, I, we're, we just switched or we just switched a year ago. Yeah. We're just, it's not even on my radar right now. And, um, and they kept in touch with me and I circled back with them. And the same thing is true uh, uh, in our work 
uh, in our recruiting work where, you know, I, I connect with somebody and treat them like a human being and am mm -hmm. genuinely curious about them and their career priorities and life priorities, but they aren't looking and aren't interested and, and can't be swayed from a job right now. They're really engaged in the work or they have, you know, golden handcuffs or whatever. There are many mm -hmm. good reasons not to make a job change. Um, yeah. But um, if we stay in touch with that single person um, and continue to uh, engage with them and build that relationship, we're likely to be at the top of the, of the pile. We're, we're likely to be the first person they call when the time does come. Change always mm -hmm. happens. I think there's, sure. there's another piece of this like relationship drive that's, again, just looking at the long game at a one-on-one at -on -one individual level. Yeah, no, I, I think you're correct. And, and the long game, I think it, it, it's critically important because, again, it's like, as we said, timing, we have no idea of the timing. Uh, and the other thing, too, is I think uh, oftentimes, you know, people have good contacts or set up good relationships and then that person leaves and moves somewhere else and they forget about them instead of going, hang on a second this person could be my ambassador. This person could be helping me get in there. And and all the work you put into the relationship, you just kind of, it all just goes to nothing because you you you, you see it in the context of just that one deal. It's so true. It's so true. And I think, you know, there's always a tension between needing to hit your number, right? I mean, there's the there's yeah. the goals that the board sets down, that, to, that the CEO yeah. sets down, that the VP sales sets down. There's always those goals to chase and there, there are timelines associated with them. And you have to be judicious with your time. Um, so I'm not suggesting to just, you know, take a pure, I'm spending time with you kind of approach. Um, but, yeah. I, but I think, you know, what I'm arguing for is maybe that the pendulum should swing back a little bit uh, toward in the direction of meaningful human relationships. And, you know, I feel like I can in, in our work, in my work as a recruiter, um, I can maintain a really sincere and legit relationship with somebody with a couple of touch points a year. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and it could even be just we shake hands, you know, we see each other at a at a conference, you know, once a year, right, or twice right. a year, something like that. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not arguing that you just over invest with people who can't sure. or won't make decisions. But I am just arguing that um, if you take a slight if you take the long view, both at an individual yeah. level, at a business level, at a pipeline level, that that will pay off uh, in 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 your career and in your pocketbook. And now, of course, we're we're faced with another little challenge, and that's with AI and with bots and with everything. And you know, AI is getting scary now. Uh, about that that human interaction, about even knowing if it is a human interaction anymore. And I'm sure this is going to become more and more of an issue. And I think that's where you're going to also be able to to stand out if you're relationship focused, because. I think there's going to be a lot of kind of pendulum swinging coming up. It's so interesting. You know, when I came up as a recruiter, the, the key KPI was phone time, mm -hmm. right? Dot, number yeah. of dials and uh, number of connects and the, the amount of the number of minutes that you spent on a phone in a day, number of hours, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then maybe you know, maybe as Gen Z kind of came in, it was probably, this was probably true uh, with millennials too, but you started, we started to see phone work be far less effective. And so we started measuring, you know, other kinds of connects be beyond just phone time. And, and it ended up, we, we stopped monitoring phone time at all. And phone mm -hmm. time is an interesting, an interesting proxy for relationship, right? I mean, yeah. I'm spending four hours a day talking on the phone, Presumably, that's a that's a lot of like raw material for relationship building, and right. so we saw the pendulum swing a little bit um, with millennials and with Gen Z. They don't want to talk on the phone; they just want to text. Don't you know? Don't pester them with long emails. And then during COVID, it was so interesting. Like all of a sudden, people were answering their phones. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't yet returned to um, phone time as, a, as, a, as an important KPI for us, but we have seen that 
as tech tools, you know, exponentially multiply, um, as AI comes on on the uh, scene as as a potential substitute for human interaction, we are mm -hmm. seeing that people are preferring human interaction. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know where that goes. I mean, I think there there's such big question marks about AI in every industry, ours included. Um, I firmly believe that 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 the people that invest in relationships now are going to people be the people who ride the wave of AI mm -hmm. the most successfully. Yeah, and just I mean, as you're as you're obviously in the in the recruiting uh, industry. Just, I, I believe there's like massive shifts, I think, in people. And I'm just talking about finding talent right now. Just gone off on a tangent for a moment um, about finding talent is that I don't think company, I don't think all, there's, or there's quite a lot of companies who have not adjusted to the reality of maybe the balance for a lot of jobs, the balance of power has shifted a little bit in terms of where I want to work, how I want to work, yeah. all of that. And, and I think that's, that's a challenge for a lot of organizations. And then to talk about relationships, and then if you do maybe have a, a largely virtual organization, how you manage and, and establish relationships with those. Yeah, it's funny. We made we made the shift. You know, our, our headquarters was in Boulder, Colorado for, right. for a lot of years, nine years. Um, mm -hmm. And Funny enough, we we signed a lease on a really big office space that was intended to sort of support our growth for five years. Mm -hmm. And almost as soon as we signed the lease, we started, you know, people started moving to Denver or buying houses um, yeah. in the suburbs outside of Boulder just because it got really expensive. And I think that also coincided with um, a move toward virtual workforces. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Actually, we leased the office in 2018, and by the end of 2019, there was nobody in it. <laughs> so, right. so I think we got rid of the office October uh, October 31st. Uh, we moved out of 2019, and and went to a fully remote model. And then, of course, you know, March of 2020 came, and mm -hmm. you know, 100 percent of the of <laughs> of our client base yeah. and our candidate base, uh, uh, you know, everybody's virtual at that point. Um, so we, we made the move at a similar time to when everybody else did, and we've had to learn some stuff, you know, huge learning curve in terms of compliance and HR stuff. Um, but in terms of the culture piece, the way that we, I, mean, I think we have navigated this well, mm -hmm. um, we have a daily call with every, every member on the team. It's a mandatory meeting for everybody on the meeting, uh, on the, uh, on our team. And it's a 15 minute call and no work talk is allowed. So right. yeah. we talk, well, we don't talk about politics a lot, but we talk, <laughs> we talk about music. We have a lot of young parents on our team. And so we talk right. about what their, you know, their kids are doing and talk about television. And, um, you know, we're making a daily deposit in the account of really mm. team relationship, team dynamic. Yeah, and and what's what's really interesting about that, Mark, is that that's that's what you've got to do with uh, prospects and 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 customers now, because in a lot of in a lot of industries now, I mean, salespeople aren't traveling; they're not meeting people. People don't even want you to come; they're quite happy to do it virtually. So, building relationships virtually is is an incredible uh, is an incredibly important skill set. It really is, and I think. Um... And I see it, you know, as a business owner, I, I, I probably get 10 cold outreaches a day. And it's so fascinating to see, like, the different approaches that people take. And, you know, I we we do the same kind of stuff. We do the same kind of engineering, like, you know, what kind of messages are getting people to respond. Even though so much of our work is from existing clients, we're constantly right. trying to, you know, find new people to develop relationships with. So we're, we are also, I don't want to make it sound like we're not cold calling and we're not sure. um, facing those similar hurdles, those same hurdles we are. Um, but it, you know, it's really fascinating to watch because like some attempts at relationship are really clumsy, you know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and others are feel really authentic. Um, mm. I think as a business owner, I'm just, I, wasn't really prepared to think about this conversation through that lens, but the ones that appeal the most to me 
are the ones that um, feel the least urgent. Right. Uh, which yeah. is which is interesting. You know, we we always used to when I was trained initially as a salesperson, we wanted to convey a urgency. sense of scarcity and a sense of urgency. And um, I don't I don't know that that works anymore. And no. I don't I don't think I I don't think I practice that way anymore. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point for people is like, you know, you may be a fantastic face to face uh, relationship builder, but, you know, online, you may need to you may need to learn some new skills. You may need to adjust. And I think that authenticity piece is is absolutely correct. Mark, I think authenticity was the word of the year last year. I'm sure. I'm sure. sure. <laughs> but I mean, but you have to be authentic and not inauthentically authentic or authentically inauthentic. I'm not sure, whichever. But uh, it has to be real if it's going to work. Yeah. No, I think that's true. And we we certainly hire with that in mind. And I think a lot of people are now too. I think, you know, yeah. um, hiring with COVID, like the, the pressures to go virtual that happened mm -hmm. um, in 2020 and, and, and after, and then a lot of the, the movements to try to diversify workforces and look, really look hard at equity and look at the employee experience. Mm -hmm. um, like there's just so many things that, um, so many positive developments in the business world, I believe yeah. that um, I, I think like, I think just like the old school the old school, like, I'm going to tell you how it is. And this is yeah. the reality. It just doesn't work. There's too much information. We have, we all have access to too much other yeah. information to compare experiences against. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. No, that makes total sense, and I think that's a, another really important point. Uh, well, listen, Mark, this has been this has been fascinating. We're bumping up against the end of our time. All of Mark's information is going to be below this uh, video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure thing. So I founded Higher Education in 2010. We recruit for education companies. We do a lot of sales, marketing, and uh, product management searches, and, and executive search kind of falls to me. Um, we do some consulting. We do some temp um, attempt to hire kind of work. We're, you know, always trying to be innovative and try new things. Um, and, uh, I love my team and, and they're awesome. So feel free to connect with me, uh, and, and follow the thread, uh, to my team members. I think we set up a landing page for folks, for listeners of the podcast, which is hireedu.com forward slash Mark. Um, and there's a time to, there's a way to book some time with me if you um, are curious about our services or also, I, I mean, I think because I'm a sales guy and because sales has been such a big part of our business, um, there's a little bit of bleed over into sales consulting that gets at like staffing situations, sure. things like that. So always happy to chat, um, really uh, always also happy to have opportunities like this to, to meet new people and develop new relationships like this, John. I, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, listen, Mark, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Yeah.